Hello friends and welcome to Vlogmas Day 14. My name is Michelle and today we are going to be talking about my bookish slash booktube resolutions for 2022. So I knew that there would be a day where I had where I would have to sit down and film this video and think about what I want to do with my life as a reader and as a booktuber in 2022. And the conclusion is that I don't know. <laughs> I have my little notebook here because I'm old-fashioned so I wrote everything down on this little piece of paper. I have a couple bookish booktube resolutions that I want to talk to you about so we're just gonna go through them. Let me know if you share any of them with me or if uh, you have different resolutions but I will ask you at the end. This is just like already letting you know that if you want to share any leave them down below. So my first resolution is uh, okay so I have a shelf I might include like footage but it's really messy but I have a shelf just above my bed and that's the oldest books on my TBR or books that I have had for the longest time. Once upon a time I had this system where every tenth book that I read or fifth fifth or tenth I don't remember because it's been a few years at this point I had a system where every fifth or tenth book I read had to be the oldest book off of that shelf. It worked for a year, but towards the end of it, it was really exhausting. I didn't want to read any of the books because I'm a huge mood reader and like, I just wasn't feeling like any of those books. And ever since then, I've been kind of abandoning it. The last time I took a book from there, the oldest one was I think somewhere last year in summer, where I took The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow off of that TBR, showed it in like a TBR video, I was like, I'm going to read this, it's the oldest book on my TBR and I'm going to read it. It's still sitting on my TBR card, where I have like books that were like part of a TBR, so they no longer chronologically fit into my TBR, because my TBR is chronological, and like I move it up every time, and I didn't want to go through the hassle of like moving it back down and putting it back, so it's still sitting on top of my TBR card over there. And I still haven't read it and it's been a year and a half. So that's the last time I touched the oldest one. And other than that, I think I took one off of there last year as well because it was a specific prompt from my girlfriend to read a book off of that shelf. And then this year I read The People in the Trees, Trees by Hanya Yanagahara, which was also on the shelf. And that's it. Other than that, it has not been touched. And every time I look at it, I just have like this sense of guilt of like, I am not touching you at all. So I'm trying to figure out if I should do like a small TBR jar just for the books that are on that shelf, or if I should have a system again, where like every 10th book I read is like not specifically the oldest one, which is something off of that shelf in general. But all I know is it needs to get smaller. Okay, so the next goal that I have is like the pretty standard how many books I want to read next year. This I do on Goodreads like everyone does. I started at 52 because I do want to read at least a book a week. I want it to be more. Last year I flexed and read 120 something books. This year I don't think I'm even gonna touch 80 which is sad because I liked reading so much. But I think I'm currently sitting at like 73-ish I think I'm pretty sure. Not bad, like at all, but I wanted it to be more. But I still set it at 52 every year because that's like my minimum that I want to hit every year. So that's going to be happening. Hopefully, I'm going to be reading 52 books next year. The third bookish resolution that I have is uh, booktube related. And I just really need to get back on schedule. Once upon a time, I had a schedule where I uploaded twice a week on two set days. But then with my new job and everything just going kind of like falling apart around me as far as booktube goes... I kind of gave up on that schedule and sometimes it's really hard to maintain, not even because I'm that busy, because Vlogmas clearly is proving that I can pull it off if I want to. It's mostly I lack the motivation. My channel is not growing and has not been growing for a very long time, but the schedule is something that I need for myself. I think it will be once a week because I just also need to relax. December has been a moment. Then another, this is booktube related but also personal, I need to review more books. This year I was, okay, so before I had this uh, thing where I was like, review every single thing that I read. It doesn't, it's not necessary. Every book does not need my review. It just doesn't. 
especially if I'm not rating that book five stars. So sometimes it's okay to not rate it, sometimes it's okay to just give it a rating and let it go. However, the transition between reviewing every single book and not reviewing every single book kind of resulted in me not reviewing anything. I don't even remember the last time I posted a normal, specific, serious review on Goodreads for a book that I read because I'm just like, you know, put a rating on that, post it and be done with it and then I wrap it up in like my wrap up here. But that has never been enough for me so I really would like to go back to reviewing books more seriously. Sometimes on this channel as well though I know that review videos just don't really do well for me but if I'm really passionate about something that I'm gonna review it. In fact I have a review coming later this week so <laughs> you know. But in general next year I would really like to get back to seriously reviewing some books that I read because I miss it. I miss thinking about books critically on paper, not just like in my head as I'm reading or as I'm like talking about it briefly in a wrap-up, but more in depth. So I definitely want to get back into that and do it more often. Then we have another one that's like pretty usual for me and that is to read a new release, at least one, for every month of the year. The first seven or eight months I do really well. I have all the <laughs> I have all the new releases for every month. I read something. And then September, so September sometimes is also okay. October, November, December hit and I read nothing of those months. Like for example, I'm missing a November release. I'm missing a December release from this year. I'm missing, I think, a September release. Might also October, not sure. So I'm trying to catch up, but I don't think I will because I also want to read things that I'm like genuinely in the mood for right now because you know towards the end of the year you just want to have those five star reads. <laughs> you understand me? So it's more difficult, but next year I would like to keep up with it as well. And like I do pretty well and it is something that I am passionate about. So I just definitely want to read new releases next year as well. Another resolution that I have is also a continuation of this year and with one of them also previous year. So next year I'm going to be pulling from Jessie's deck of TBR cards. I've been using their cards for this year, I think. I might have started like last year in December or somewhere closer to that date when I got them, like the deck, the cards. But the way I do it, I pull one every month and then I read something for it. It does help keeping your reading diverse if you're not doing it by yourself. So like if you're considering how you can get into the habit of picking up more diverse books, that deck of TBR cards, amazing for that for sure. And another prompt related thing, every month my girlfriend and I give each other a reading prompt for that month. So on the first, <laughs> we always give each other something. So I will be giving her prompts next year and she will giving she will be giving prompts to me next year as well, one every month. So that's something that I will also be keeping up with and continuing because it makes me happy. And then like the last two res resolutions I have are kind of like more out there, I guess you could say. The first one is to stop being scared. Like, listen, I have stepped down from doing so many videos and making so many videos and so much content just because I've been scared. Like, no one's going to watch it. It would be too much work. It would not work out the way I want it to. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. The channel's not growing anyway. Like, whether I do those videos or not, it's still gonna remain the same, probably. And... If it doesn't work out the way I want it to, at least I have learned. Like, that experience is good for learning. And if it's too much work, no one is telling me that I have to get it done by a certain day. Like, this is my space that I can do whatever I want with. So the only thing stopping me from, like, pursuing those more complicated projects is me. I need to stop being scared about booktube and what I do on this channel. But I also need to stop being scared of books. Do you know how many 500-page books I have on my shelves that I am genuinely so excited to read? but I never do because I'm scared of their length for no good reason. So I just really need to stop being scared in general. And on that note, the last resolution is to experiment more. I have an Instagram account that I don't use at all because I just don't know why. Like, I feel like, I feel like that Instagram and every Instagram post just has to be so fucking aesthetic. But like, the thing is, I agree that Instagram is kind of dying. And like, that is a space where you can just be creative and post something that is perfect to you like Instagram is the one thing that I have always been able to take in a very chill way like I don't care if one person likes my post I don't care it just looks pretty that's what gives me the serotonin on Instagram the fact that it looks pretty when I open my profile and it's a nice theme I would like to post more on Instagram I say this every year I've been trying and I think maybe it's also because there's no pressure for me to do it because I just don't care that much about Instagram that I don't end up doing it because I'm like huh who cares anyway <laughs> You know, like, I don't have a following there. I don't really upkeep 
the account at all but at the same time it's so pleasing to look at so i would like to get back into it and i would also like to experiment with tiktok tiktok is a whole nother level of like a ser serotonin boost i've posted maybe like two sorry phone i've posted maybe like two book talks and they've skyrocketed for my standards like Every single book talk video that I posted or TikTok or whatever you even want to call it has more views than any of my videos. So why not experiment with it more and get the serotonin that I'm craving? But I think that's also what I've been scared of, you know, experimenting on TikTok a little more. So I would definitely also like to do that more next year and see what it brings. You know, like the possibilities are endless. You can do anything. This is what I'm like realizing at the end of every year. Like, I can do anything. What am I doing? Like, why am I not pursuing all the weird things that I want to pursue? What's stopping me? And the answer is always me. So next year, it's about digging deep and stopping with, you know, stopping myself from doing those things. I'm sure I also forgot stuff that I would like to accomplish next year, but, you know, my memory only goes so far. I'm sure I'll figure something else out. But I wanted to ask you, I already mentioned at the beginning, what bookish resolutions do you have? Or if you have, you know, like a booktube channel, a bookstagram account, or a book blog, or a book talk account, like, what are your resolutions that you want to, like, work on next year? Not necessarily goals. These are not goals. These are just, like, some things that I would like to keep in mind for next year, whether I do them or not. But it's something that I would like to think about more, ponder, while looking out the window wistfully tell me if you have anything like that if you have any resolutions for yourself do you do we share any of them let me know in the comments down below i think that's all for me for now but i cannot sign off yet because i have to tell you that my socials are linked down below and that you should also like this video if you enjoyed it and that i would be really grateful if you subscribed for more vlogmas content but also more content in general i would really appreciate it and now i can sign off so intro ellen ripley fashion I'm signing off.